I'd always wanted to drive her since I remember. Glenn Keane once recalled. And as soon as he could hold a pencil, there was no stopping him. He had developed and devoted his life to art and an incredible career spanning almost 38 years as an animator. Born April 13, 1954, Glenn grew up in Paradise Valley, Arizona. His father, cartoonist Bill Keen, created the long-running Family Circus comic strip. And so, so sketch pads and freshly sharpened pencils were never difficult to find around the house. The elder Keen based the strip on his real-world family, with Glenn providing the inspiration for young Billy. Torn between his love of football and his desire to become an artist, Glenn eventually decided to attend the California Institute of the Arts. His initial goal was to pursue a course of study in the fine arts, but when wires got crossed, he wound up being enrolled in the film graphics program as an animation student. <laughs> Despite not knowing anything initially about animation, he soon embraced the art form. As a summer job, Glenn spent three months working at the filmation studio, and in 1974 was accepted as a Disney animator. Glenn found himself one of a new generation of animators, brought in to be tutored under Walt's remaining veterans as they approached retirement. He learned from the masters, including Disney legends Eric Larson, Frank Thomas, and Ollie Johnson. Their lessons served him well on his first major assignment, assisting Johnston in drawing the little orphan girl Penny for the 1977 film, the Rescuers. <laughs> he followed this with work on Elliot the Dragon for Pete's Dragon and earned, yes, and earned praise for his work on the thrilling battle scene with a towering grizzly bear at the climax of the Fox and the Hound. Glenn's body of work includes the Little Mermaid for which he animated the heroine Ariel. Successful projects for which he animated memorable characters such as the Golden Eagle Mara Hoot uh, in The Rescuers Down Under, the imposing Beast for the Beauty and the Beast, and the proud and noble Pocahontas. Glenn also tackled the title character for the 1999 film Tarzan and animated the roguish John Silver for Treasure Planet. In 19. 96, Glenn began work on a retelling of the Rapunzel story, which he would develop over the next decade. This project became the 2010 hit, Tangle. As executive producer, animation supervisor, and directing animator for the character Rapunzel. Glenn was the recipient of the 1992 Annie Award for Outstanding Individual Achievement in the Field of Animation for his work on Beauty and the Beast, and in 2007, received the prestigious Windsor McKay Award for Lifetime Contribution to the Field of Animation. It's impossible to define Glenn's artistry or measure his contributions to Disney animation. And even among the world's greatest animators, he stands apart. Glenn draws, and he does it with such talent and such heart, his creations come to life with great soul and depth and wonder. There is something truly magical about creating life with nothing more than a pen and paper. And Glenn spent his career at Disney doing it over and over and over again. And even though he retired last year, he keeps on drawing because it's just who he is. And he keeps mentioning new artists, mentoring new artists, sharing his gift and ensuring his particular brand of magic can continue. And for that, we are all grateful. Glenn was a creative force behind an exceptional era of Disney animation, a period fondly called our second golden age, giving us extraordinary characters and stories. He says his inspiration for some of his most famous works came from the people he loves most, and that's his family. And some of Ariel's most, char most important characteristics came from Glenn's wife. <laughs> now you'll explain that. <laughs> Tarzan's grace, Surfing through the vines came from watching his son on a skateboard. His inspiration for Rapunzel came from his daughter. Len always says he put a bit of himself in the beast. It must be the character's compassionate side because aside from his formidable artistic talent, Glenn has always been known for his gentle ways and his infinite kindness. Glenn represents the best of Disney animation and quite frankly, the best of Disney, period. 
We are forever in his debt for giving us some of the most beautiful and most memorable characters ever drawn. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a true Disney artist, Disney legend, Glenn King. Glenn. Sign this statue and put a pencil right here. I think that would be <laughs> appropriate. I'm going to turn this into a pencil sharpener. <laughs> no, this is this is incredibly humbling. Um, the idea of being a legend. Uh, last night I mentioned to my wife, you know, from now on you're going to call me legend, right? <laughs> she said, well, you don't kiss like a legend. <laughs> No, the, um, and Linda was my inspiration for Ariel. Uh, she has this girl next door kind of a look, and actually I use my family very much the way my dad used his family. It's just something he, dad always said, draw what you know, uh, put out there for the audience something that you have experienced so others can identify with it. And uh, it works. You have to be honest and open and take your life and open it up for the world. Uh, and it's an incredibly humbling thing uh, to see people respond uh, to the work uh, that I've done. Um, I love characters that believe the impossible is possible. I love animating a character that has this burning desire inside. Uh, that believes that even though something is, is as crazy as a mermaid, thinking that she can one day walk on legs and, and win the love of that handsome prince or, or the beast, to believe that somebody could look deeper in, inside than his ugly exterior and fall in love with him, I mean, that, it's a fairy tale. And that seems impossible. But I think what makes Disney so incredibly wonderful is that it has the courage to put fairy tales out there and say, yes, this seems impossible, doesn't it? But it is. It is possible. And I know I lived that. I mean, my portfolio, like we, we spoke about, went to this, the wrong school. And somehow, it was the right school, but I didn't choose it. And I do believe that the very best things in life are those things that we can't really earn, but they're a gift. They're a gift from, from God, just at that right moment, it's given. And I went into the wrong school, supposedly. <laughs> and, I, and I thought, well, animation, this is like a combination of all the arts. I'm going to be an animator. And then I looked at Disney animation, and I, I knew I could never be able to draw like that. I saw Mark Davis's animation of Sleeping Beauty, and I just remembered the exquisite lines and the beauty, and I thought, I, I don't draw like that. I, I kind of scribble. I, 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 I can't do that. And so my summer job, I, I thought, well, I, I know I can't work at Disney, but I'll, I'll work on uh, some Saturday morning show. And by the end of that summer, the boss said, um, Glenn, you're, you're going to go back to school, right? I said, yeah. He said, well, that's good, because if you weren't, I'd fire you because you draw like a three-year-old. <laughs> and at 19, I, I felt like I did draw like a three-year-old, but to have somebody say it, it was, it was so disheartened. And, but something happened where I, I heard that Disney was training. And so I came in very sheepish one day into the halls of Disney Animation. I'll never forget the smell of the, those legendary halls. I mean, it had the smell of pencil shavings, cigarettes, and scotch. It was this wonderful, <laughs> wonderful artistic incense. That, and I walked in there and I showed my portfolio to Eric Larson, one of Walt Disney's nine old men. He was kind of a big, big belly on Eric here respectable, grandfatherly type. I mean, 
when you have a big belly like that, you always have a choice where do you put your belt. You know, the truck drivers down, have it down here. Respect your grandfather's hold that belt. And that was Eric. But I, I showed Eric my portfolio, and and he started moving through these, looking for some potential, moving faster. Well, I spent three months on that drawing, <laughs> and not stop. All these drawings that I thought I, I put my heart and soul into, he found nothing. And then he stopped on this one little drawing, and I wasn't even going to put it in there. It was truly a scribble, just really quick. He looked at that, and I thought, oh, I knew I shouldn't have put that in there. <laughs> so I kept going all the way through, and came back to that. Can you do more like this? You like that? I think there's something here. <laughs> and it was just this fast little ink sketch. And I, I knew, that, well, that's what I do. I mean, that's me. I can, I can do that. He said, if you can do more like that, maybe we can work with you. And I, I came into Disney and started to work with these great mentors, Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnston, Eric Larson, Gordon Kimball. Willie Breitherman, it's just great teachers. And bit by bit by bit, it grew. And really that impossible dream really did come true for me. Uh, and I am so thankful. It doesn't happen by yourself. When I saw that animation of Disney animation, I thought, I can't do that. I was right, you can't do it alone. You need other artists around you the directors that gave me the opportunities, the assistants that helped me, my mentors, my father bringing me up, the inspiration of my wife, Linda, my, my children and grandchildren. Uh, I am so thankful, so, so blessed, and I just want to say, long live Disney animation. Thank you very much.